Netflix was in the news every day this week. It got into a very public fight with Verizon over who's responsible when the streaming TV show you're watching starts to slow down and buffer. And there was this big new PricewaterhouseCoopers report, let's put up the headline on screen, predicting that revenue from sites like Netflix will overtake the U.S. box office in just three years. Most importantly, if you're an Orange is the New Black fan like I am, the second season of the show premiered on Friday and got a whole lot of media coverage. It has become the biggest hit on Netflix. Think about this for a moment. At the heart of basically every media business story of this era is the seismic shift from live, linear, scheduled viewing to taped, on demand, on your scheduled viewing. That's the future, and no company is doing more to move us toward that on-demand world than Netflix. So this week, I went out west to the company's Silicon Valley headquarters and sat down with one of the most powerful men in media, the man who picks and chooses which shows show up on Netflix. Meet Ted Sarandos. There was healthy skepticism last year when, when House of Cards and Orange is the New Black were premiering. I, I would even say scorn in some corners when they premiered. Do you feel vindicated now? Um, I think, you know, it was, it was a likely, uh, it was a likely bet that um, an, an internet DVD by the mail, by mail company who's been streaming for a few years uh, was not going to launch TV shows that mattered right off the bat. And I would have said it would have taken us several years to get to the level of original programming that we've achieved in our first, in our first year. Sounds like you were a bit of a skeptic as well this time last year. No, I was uh, cautiously optimistic. But you could see why there yeah. were so many skeptics. I could absolutely, definitely could respect why someone would, would, uh, would give some pause before they would uh, declare victory on it. By having an around the world launch, doesn't it make it more of an event for Netflix? Absolutely, a global event. You know, versus a, 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 and it's not just the launch of a U.S. show that some people in some pockets of the world are interested in. Um, House of Cards, by the way, in, in China is an enormous hit. Um, I talked to Kevin Spacey recently. You talked about doing a live show in Macau. And he said that uh, he does a show regularly there, and he's always very well received. Uh, but this time, he was like Elvis, and the people yeah, would just Elvis. love him because they love Francis Underwood. Netflix has said that Orange is the New Black is actually more popular than House of Cards. How do you measure that? Uh, in, in that case, just more, more people watching the show. There's more people watching the show for more hours than House of Cards. They're both very successful show, and, but Orange is the New Black is the largest one. And that's Netflix it's counting the streams by itself, not from a third party like Nielsen. Correct, correct. By choosing not to release ratings, you're also making a statement about how people's viewing habits are changing that people aren't watching at the same time, they're watching on yes. their own schedules. That's right, and like I said, and we value that viewing equally a year later or the night we go live. So for some people who really love Orange is the New Black, believe it or not, there's a lot of them who will watch all 13 hours in the first 13 hours of availability when it comes on. And we, uh, but for the vast majority of the people, they will watch at their own pace whenever they want and at whatever pace that they want. And that's so the beauty of all the episodes. isn't actually that significant. Oh no, binge, well, it depends on how you define binging. I guess I mean yeah. people who watch the moment it's available, right that same weekend. And, and, and I mean, you have to imagine, first of all, you have to narrow it down to the a number of people who have 13 hours on their hands right. <laughs> and don't need to sleep much. And the thing that we know for sure is that hardly anyone's gonna watch one episode and wait till next week and watch one at the exact same time and watch, wait, wait another week So regardless of what they were gonna watch, they're not gonna watch the way the broadcast networks trained them to for decades. Exactly, and the more we talk about ratings and compare our shows to television shows, then the more they're gonna think about it in that light. What conventions would you most still like to change right now? Oh, I, I mean, I, the, the, it's mostly all different flavors of waiting. Um, waiting? Waiting, I think that there's so much um, built into the, uh, you know, uh, we're gonna string the audience along for several weeks so that we can sell ads and that we can promote our shows. And I think that all, every kind of flavor of that uh, should go out the window uh, as we have conditioned the universe to expect instant gratification by the internet. Mm. You know, so I've never heard anybody say, you know, that, uh, you know, it would be great if I put in my question in Google and waited a week for the answer to come back. <laughs> uh, I don't think that the, that the, the sexiness, the allure of anticipation is anywhere near as good as the, the satisfaction of, of, of watching. You can watch much more of my interview with Ted Sarandos on cnnmoney.com slash media, on demand, of course.